Okay, everybody, Stephen Key here, and today we're going to talk about getting into Walmart and why that's so exciting. How do you do it? If you've got an idea, I know you're going to need help. I know you've got a thousand questions, so please watch this video if you want to get into Walmart. <laughs> Okay, hey, I got a couple special guests here. We've got Brian O'Dell. He's going to talk all about Walmart. And we have another special guest. George is an inventor, and he's got his product, I think, selling everywhere. So let's jump in at the very beginning. George, you're an inventor. Tell us a little bit about you. Hey, Stephen. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, first of all, I just want to let you know the genesis of Brian and I's relationship came by me being one of your viewers back in August of 21. So I just want to give you and your team props for, for that, for that exposure. So thank you. Um, as far as Hinch Hero goes, um, you know, I, I'm a retired firefighter. I moved down to Florida with my family and I didn't quite know what I was going to do. I got into the home building business, uh, worked for a national home builder and that is really the reason behind finding a purpose for Hinge Hero. I was showing customers model homes, squeaky doors drove me crazy. These are brand new homes selling for upwards of a million dollars. All right. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a solution to these squeaky door hinges without leaving a drippy, goopy mess. So basically, I went home one day, I had the idea, and um, I went to my medicine cabinet and I actually uh, dumped out a whole thing of airborne. And then what I did is I went in the garage with my Dremel tool and I created the very first prototype. Here it is right here. This is uh, this is an airborne tube and a Dremel tube uh, tool. And uh, that created the very first prototype for Hinge Hero. And essentially what it does, Stephen, it slips on the bottom of a hinge and then it's got uh, a nozzle guide that you insert, you know, a WD-40 straw and you go ahead and you squirt. And then what that does is it penetrates the hinge seams and it contains all the overspray without Whoa. leaving, without leaving a mess. So it's really, it's really simple. It's very novel. You know, we've had hinges uh, all the way dated back to 1600 BC, and you know, all of them at some point in time are going to squeak. Uh, the way people kind of solved that problem in the past was using, you know, jellies or pulling the hinge pins. You know, it's kind of a laborious type of a, a task. Hinge hero makes it super simple. Uh, so that's really kind of the onset of, of the whole idea. Well, I can tell you right away, um, when you use that spray on a hinge, it's everywhere. I don't that's care. Right. Even though it's a little nozzle, even though you're supposed to hit it right, it just drips everywhere. So you've got that's the right. solution to that? Yeah, that's exactly right. I've got the solution to that because I was the guy going inside the model homes and spraying the hinges with a roll of paper towel. And it was always a mess. It was dripping on the floor, on the carpet on the woodwork. And I said, there's got to be a better way. And then the, the idea came to me. Um, once I did my very crude prototype, I invested in a 3D printer. I taught myself how to CAD design. Okay. And then I went ahead and I produced the very first working prototypes, almost in its finished form, uh, what it looks like today. Okay. So you've got this great idea, simple solution. I love it. You know, who everybody's got doors in their house, right? So right. It's, it's like, how big is the market? Well, I, I would say it's pretty big. So how do you meet Brian? So Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell you how you guys connected. Oh, absolutely. So I've been in the CPG world for 24 years now. And in 2018, I started my own sales firm, repping smaller companies into Walmart. And lo and behold, back three years ago, this gentleman gave me a call and said, hey, you want to do a really quick interview on this uh, InventRight TV? And I'm like, absolutely. And uh, it was it was a blast because when we originally tried to do that interview, I remember like it was yesterday, I thought you and I were just going to talk. And the next thing you know, you, it seems like, hey, you want to hit record? I'm like, sure, let's do it. I've got no problem. And it was completely off the cuff. And it was a great conversation um, and absolutely wonderful. And you told me then that, hey, you're tough to find, but people are going to start calling you. And you were 100% right. I still to this day get at least one or two calls a week from that original video. But, you know, August of 21, I got a call from this gentleman named George. And he's like, I got this crazy idea. And I said, hey, let's talk. 
And, and what I really enjoyed about the conversation, because I, I get everything from people who have ideas right. and they need a lot of help, you know, to get started to someone who's selling product on Amazon, they're ready to roll. They've got a bankroll, they've got patents, they've got, you know, everything set up marketing, you know, and everything in between. Okay. Um, and so George was kind of halfway in the middle. There are a couple of things that he wanted to change. And we had really good conversations based off that initial video, which were, here's where I'm currently sitting, but here's where I want to go. And like you said earlier, a lot of people, that goal is Walmart or retail just in general. And I find it more and more now that people have a solid Amazon business and something might be, you know, an algorithm changes or something gets a little bit goofy and they're thinking, man, I want to get out into retail where I have a little bit more um brand reach a little bit more recognition i can control my destiny a little bit more and so that's i mean that's that's that catalyst for when that video that you and i shot three years ago is still rocking and rolling people are still calling so it's been it's been fantastic well you know what's really interesting about that i think if you're an entrepreneur with an idea walmart is like the goal Right. And and I know there's a lot of other places to sell product, but for some reason, Walmart is still that big customer that every entrepreneur wants to have their product inside. And and I had a member at Invent, right? He had a great product. He was selling online and he wanted to get into Walmart. And I knew that navigating that world was pretty tough. I I at one time I was selling my product in Walmart and I knew it wasn't easy and I didn't have help, but he had but this one particular member, Ryford, if you're watching Ryford, there's a call out to you. He said he found you. Yeah. And you were making his life so much easier to navigate the details at Walmart. And that's how I think it was kind of like, wow, you you had someone there that could actually walk you through the process. How important is that? I I think it's instrumental. And, and I would say, you know, one of the things to keep in mind especially when you're an entrepreneur, it seems like you have to wear every hat, right? And you might not be the best at every single thing that you're doing, but as you grow, as you expand, it's it's vitally important that you get the right players in the right spot. And if you're not that person, you better go find that right person. Um, and Ryford is one of those people who's near and dear. I talked to him this morning uh, because we talk twice a week to this day. Um, and I, I manage his Walmart business for him. Yeah. And the problem is, and I think what people find initially, it's the, I'm sending out emails and nobody's getting back to me. Like nobody's even talking to me, right? Which is that first step. Yeah. Then you realize that that's probably one of the easier steps when you <laughs> when you grab that big dog by the tail and start flinging around and you're doing lead time audit forms and all the, the you know, new item forms. And now you're trying to figure out ladder plans and it sounds like a different language. And it is. I mean, it is. It's something that I've been doing for 25 years. It'd be like going to another country and learning a language for 25 years. It's second nature. And, you know, just an update with Ryford. Um, when he and I first started working together, he had one item in 700 stores. And so 700 points of distribution. And this year, He's got three items and over 6,000 points of distribution. So it can be done, but it is not an overnight thing. That's that's one of the things that I think people don't understand is managing the details really, really well is vitally important when you're trying to launch something at, at any major retailer. Yeah, I was telling someone when we finally hit, we were in thousands of stores when we finally got the Walmart. And it took a long time just to get inside their system. It took a long time to understand their system. And if you don't understand it correctly, you get dinged. Um, and mm -hmm. it's it's a big commitment. I mean, you're playing in the Super Bowl. That's the way I looked at it. And you're work you know you you're working up to that moment, and you need a coach there to make sure you, you're ready for that that spotlight. Yeah, and that's Absolutely. the way I kind of looked at it. Yeah, and and it was it was kind of neat because one of the things that we should talk about with George's evolution is the way that George got into Walmart is their main the USA open call. Okay. And Walmart holds this every single year. All right. So you go back to August of 2021, well, that was one of the very first conversations that George and I had is he was producing product in China 
And he asked if it was worth moving to the U.S. And we had a really good conversation about balancing cost only if there's, you know, a certain gap. You know, if it's $2 in China and $10 in the U.S., probably not. Okay. But there are efficiencies that he was able to take advantage of. So he was able to move his production to Tampa. And because of that, we were able to get into what's called Walmart's open call. Got it. Um, and that's that's where the magic really, really happened. Wow, that's true. So, yeah, George, it, you're you're out there. You've got this great idea. You know it works. It's simple. It's effective. Um, you watched the you watched the YouTube channel and found that's how you found. That's Brian? how I found Brian. Yeah, that's how I found Brian. I was a I was one of your viewers, and I still am, Stephen. So keep pumping out the great content. And that's where I found Brian. And I'm not I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and chase people down. As a matter of right. fact, just quick story. Uh, I chased down Gary Ridge, who's the CEO of WD-40, because I believed in my product so much that he contact, he connected me with somebody internally. And we had a five-month NDA where they were strongly considering bringing Hinchero into the WD-40 family. Wow. So, so at, when that didn't work out, because they're not a gadget company, they're a chemical company. Yeah. That's where, you know, I told myself, I got to find different channels, different avenues to get this product in, in bigger markets. I was already in Amazon, already sold thousands and thousands of Hinge Heroes. But when I reached out to Brian, we just connected so well. And he can speak the language with these retailers that I have no knowledge of. Yeah. Um, everything that I learned through this process, I basically did on my own. And Brian was an awesome add to getting me to understand the world of retail. And he helped me immensely. So when I got that call, when they said, hey, George, you're accepted to come to Bentonville and, and do a pitch, I emailed Brian and says, are you in? He says, oh, yeah, there we, we went. We created the, the slide deck. We did a great presentation. And we were issued the golden ticket. And pretty much at that point, my life changed. Um, and so, yeah, so so the so the the company and the product continues to to move and to grow. And now we got a new product we're we're looking forward to adding to the mix here very soon as well. Yeah, so Brian, to talk about that. what what is next? You know, when you you finally get in to one of the big guys, how do you stay in the game? How do you stay competitive? how do you how do you keep that business going? What are some of the things you need to do? So the, the biggest one is paying attention, and we, we kind of touched on this, is paying attention to the details. Right. Because what ends up happening is, you know, and, and, and open calls was, was perfect because you sit down, four buyers walk in, George and I are there, we pitch them for 30 minutes, and they do, they hand out physical, they're not gold, but golden tickets to very few people. Right. And they say, here's this golden ticket, you've got a deal, right? right. And at that point, you're like, ah, my life is made. I probably should put a down payment on a yacht. You know, I should figure out what I'm going to do with all my millions of dollars. But that is just starting the clock. The clock is just getting started. And they actually take you from these rooms and they put you into a media funnel. And you've got to go talk to like local um, news reporters and, and wow. local newspapers and all that kind of stuff. And you come out and you're on this high, right? Like George and I were in seventh heaven in my tummy, I was feeling like, oh no, here it comes. Now, now, now's the work. Oh, um, right. And so what you can expect is number one, it's going to take a long time. Okay. It is it's not yeah. one of those things that you walk in and they give you a deal. And then two months later, you're shipping product. And George can attest to this. It took us what, a year and a, almost a year and a half to get onto the shelf yeah. because what ends up happening is now you've got to do a vendor setup, right? It, there's a laundry list. Yeah. You've got to become a vendor. Right. You've got to done Brad Street numbers are reviewed. Then you've got to put all of your items into data sync and everything has to line. It's it's a lot of work. And one of the things that you'll find out too is you're going to have a product and Walmart has their own timeline. They don't care about your timeline. They're going to set that modular one time a year. Okay. And when that timing happens, it could be, you know, a year from now, it could be a little bit longer. For us, it was a little bit longer, which actually turned out to be a blessing because their team, which is great, by the way, if a buyer is working with you on packaging, on, you know, some different things that you might not think about, that means that they've got ownership in the product. And our buyer was money. Like he was in it to win it. He was a young guy. He was 
literally like, I'm going to move heaven and earth. And you could tell that he had the same amount of pride in seeing that product sitting on the shelf as myself, at least. George probably had a little bit more. Just but, a little. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> but there's there's just one of those things that the more they're working with you, you're not just giving them information, the better relationship you're going to have over time. And so we worked on tweaking packages. We worked on tweaking the actual carton that is sitting on the shelf. And he was using some of his team members. So at that point in time, it's not just George and I sitting, having conversations and talking. Now we're working with an entire team inside of Walmart. So it goes from just George and I to George and I and a buyer, George and I and packaging. Now we've got the DMM, like everybody's excited. To me, if you could build that sort of connection and momentum, your odds of success increase greatly. And then all of that happens. Then you've got to manufacture enough product, get it to the right places, get your logistics set up, get your EDI to transfer orders. You've got to test that, right? Because you're not just going to come out of the gate swinging. Um, and those are the little things that it helps to have someone navigate. <laughs> Testing EDIs isn't difficult, but if you don't know it has to happen and you miss that step, and all of a sudden you get your entire you know, pipeline fill order and it doesn't work, well, now you've got a problem, right? And those, those problems, because of the size of the business, just seem really painful. And they can be. And you might only get one shot to be on that shelf at Walmart. And if you, yeah. if you mess it up, that yeah, let me, yeah, just, uh, you know, we, what's really interesting about this, um, you're right about becoming a vendor. It's complicated and it takes a long, long time to get into the system. Okay. And that, um, I didn't have any help. We, we kind of got through it. We, I could tell you, um, people ask me all the time, you know, you're selling uh, these these musical accessories at Walmart. You're doing great. Why did you quit? Because I got out of it. I left it. We were we were getting huge orders. We we're doing great. I ended up selling the business. I didn't like it because I didn't have someone helping me think it through or managing it. it to me, it was too much. It was just too much. It was an overload for me and how to keep it up and making sure. So. I, I looking back and because a lot of people say, Steve, you're in Walmart. Why did you stop? Uh, it was complicated and I wasn't comfortable and I didn't have help. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly what you bring to the party. I, I, I get it. Because if you don't have that type of person that has that type of knowledge, there's a good chance you're not going to survive it. You're, you're going to make a mistake somewhere and you're going to get frustrated with it. I, I, I did. Yeah, yeah, I can attest to that, Stephen. I, I can tell you that I've spent countless hours on the phone with tech support with Walmart or my EDI company. And it is one of those, uh, you, you get the feeling like, you know, it's the dog chasing the tail. Is it all worth it? Um, but, but you know what, I would say, you know, to anybody out there that has a product and they finally get into Walmart, you know, it's really in your best interest to just buckle down, work hard, you know, do the onboarding, learn the system, and just keep plugging away and be, you know, persistent and focused yeah. on success. And it will come. You just have to stay in the game. You got to remember, Hinch Hero started in 2018. Okay. And then I started with the patent and trademark process early on. And here we're in Walmart, but that didn't happen until late 2023. Yeah. So th there are lots of steps or lots of times. But you know what? If you focus, you stay committed to your product and you yeah. believe uh, and take, you know, take, take some risk. There's always risk in this business, Stephen, you know, that better than anybody, um, you should find success. Yeah. Uh, Brian, anything else audience needs to know? We're going to have a link down below where people can find you. I know, you know, you, you're not that easy to find because yeah. I know you're not on social media. It's not like someone type this in and find you. So We'll have some information down below so people can find you. I think we probably did that last time. And yeah. and um, is there anything else you need for people to know? Yeah, you know, there's during this conversation, there's some scary things that we talk about. And it's like, oh, you got to be buttoned up. The, the biggest reason why I wanted to sit here and have this conversation, especially with George, is to show that you can do it. It's it's not impossible. I I, I feel like there are these moments in anybody who's ever owned a business or been an entrepreneur where you're like, 
man, I don't know if I have the runway. I don't know if I can get this done. Yeah. You can, like it is possible. It's very difficult. And I think George hit the nail on the head. Like you, you have to do the work and you have to have the right people around you, which is important, but you can do it. I can tell you right now that in sitting in that, I've been in more meetings with Walmart than most human beings should ever be in. But I sat in that meeting with George and I can tell you this, honestly, if I was not in that room, George would have still gotten the golden ticket. Like, I don't think there was a moment that I added value enough then. Um, so, so there is this, you can do it. Yeah. You know? And so I want people to understand that. And you're hundred percent correct. I'm, I have been purposely very difficult to find, um, but to let you guys know, that's going to change a little bit. And, okay. and one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is after talking to all the people that watch your show over the past three years, there is a very big need for really good information around retail and around Walmart. You know, social media is great, but man, there's a lot of junk to navigate yeah. through and a lot of bad information to navigate through. And what I love about InventRight TV is you guys have built this trusted network that people know if they go there, they're going to have good information. And we want to contribute to that, right? We, we want to be, it used to be that, and I think I might have said this last time, we do the last 10 yards of the 100-yard dash really, really well. Well, now we're trying to broaden our horizon with our network and with the way that we communicate. And so there's a couple of things that we're going to work on. We are going to start doing some social media that's going to have some educational information on it. Um, George and I actually work together now outside of Hinge Hero because my network is growing so that I've got someone over Amazon now. I've got someone over website branding and marketing. And George is over manufacturing and product development. So we've grown so that we're not just this end user, that if someone comes in at any stage, we can at least provide guidance. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to run a company or do anything like that, but hopefully we can at least give good information or point them in a direction that is trusted, that has good, reliable information and sourcing that, that people can work with. And so that's kind of how we've evolved uh, and and when I say evolved, we're still evolving and hoping to do more and more. Um, and I'll give you a prime example. So for us, going to open call is a big deal. We have a, a really good success story around that. And there's a lot of people, George can attest to that, that are freaking out. They're having these moments of, I'm about to sit down with a buyer. It's their first time okay. and panic sits in. And the buyers are great because they're they're used to working with people and trying to get them to relax. But George and I and Sean Norris, our other partner, were sitting around saying, hey, how can we help in this arena? And one of the things that we talked about is doing a mock buying experience okay. where someone could contact us, right? They could send us the deck and then we're gonna go do a Zoom call and record it and hit play and we're your buyers, go. The clock starts. We're not gonna have this conversation. We're not gonna be like, how's your dog? How's the weather? Where do you live? You act like you're sitting down in front of a buyer and we're going to start the timer and you pitch to us. But then at the end, we get to actually converse, get the adrenaline calm back down and try and help them reorganize their thoughts, sure. give them the experience of the adrenaline rush just so that they have a better outcome. And so for us, if we could do something like that for the entrepreneur, it allows them to prepare better. But for us, it's also an avenue of seeing what's out there and possibly, you know, future clients that we may work with, right? You, you know what's interesting? I think the education piece is really critical, and that's why we're doing InventRight TV. And we have another platform we want to talk to you about later, because I think this education is important, and you need to be ready. You need to be prepared. You need to practice. You need to get ready for this opportunity, because I can tell you personally I've had two products at Walmart, right? Actually three. And it's truly life-changing. It is a it is an amazing experience. And one of my products was highlighted at a stockholders meeting at Walmart on the stage with Alex Trebek. And I remember just being in that retailer, experiencing that. 
uh, it's truly remarkable. So you're really helping people with their dreams, right? To, to, to hit the big time with the dreams, but have someone there that can kind of manage it for them, to understand it a little bit better, educate them a little bit more about it because it is doable. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm glad that you said that it is doable, but you have to prepare correctly and have the right people surrounding you to make sure it does work. Yeah, and Absolutely. one one thing I'll add, Stephen, is you have to be prepared to take the no's in search of the yes, because I can tell you, uh, I went to different open calls with other retailers where I didn't get a deal. So let's we need to be clear about that. But you have to keep forging forward and sure. working on your product because you believe in it. And uh, I think that's just a just really important for your audience to understand. Just keep working hard. Yeah, it'll come to it'll come together. I'll give you a, one quick one quick uh, example. I was in the final stages of being on Shark Tank. I went through all of the vetting. I had a, a producer that was assigned to me. I submitted the video. And guess what? George was rejected, right? At the at the last minute. And this is this is the honest God truth. Four weeks later, I got the call from Walmart or the email that says, You've been accepted to open call. And then and then everything opened up. So basically I got to the okay. result without dealing with Mr. Wonderful. So things can happen. You just have to stick with it. I, I'm really so I'm really glad you told that story because some people put all their eggs in that basket. And I'm like, you guys don't do that. There's a lot of doors you need to knock on. Yeah. You're going to collect a lot of no's. That's perfectly fine. But yeah. here's Shark Tank said no, and now you're in all the Walmarts. You guys, if you're listening to this, <laughs> right? Listen to it because that is a TV show. We love it. It's great. It's still a TV show. And this is kind of more, how do, you, how do you really get it done and increase your chances of success? You guys, I want to thank you for coming on InventRight TV. And I really want to thank you, Brian, for reaching back, back out to yeah. us. Um, Absolutely. Because I do think there's a lot of people that, that want this information and you're helping us to, to make that happen for them by giving your contact information. Yep, absolutely. And I'll give you one last story. And George can attest to this. This is I call it my rock star story, because like you said, I'm I'm not in the main world. I don't I've never had a Facebook account like I, I'm not a I'm not a social media guy. I just like to do the work in the backgrounds. Um, but this is around the reach that you have, Stephen. And I think this is really important when we were getting shuttled through the press line. We are sitting there talking to someone and all of a sudden I hear this, hey, that's the guy from InventRight TV. <laughs> and I, I didn't even think about it first. I'm just standing there and George whacks my arm and he says, that's you. She's looking at you. Right. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm not, I'm not on anything or whatever. And I turn around and she goes, you're the guy from InventRight TV. She's like, I watched your video like 10 times. And she came up and gave me the biggest Good. hug I've Good. ever gotten from a human being in my life. And she got a golden ticket as well. So lo and behold, <laughs> that it just it just goes to show you that you can do it, number one. And the people that are willing to do the work to go find those people and the videos and hook up with an organization like yours, it's phenomenal. And it that hug was as rewarding for me as the golden ticket. Like just knowing that you could help someone navigate this tough world. And I think it's a credit to what InventRight TV does every single day. Well, thank you for saying that. And we get to enjoy the success people are having. And we truly believe that when someone's successful, we, we are all successful. Yep. So thank you so much for coming on. We'll have you back again. I'll have a lot of information down below. You guys, Walmart, if you want to get in it, you got a great product, you need some help, contact Brian and uh, get that golden ticket. Thanks, everybody. Okay.